for a very exciting Victober TBR. I had so much fun picking and choosing and selecting and just finding out even about some books I didn't know about before that I wanted to read and add to this TBR. So I am very much so looking forward to telling you about all the books I'm going to attempt to read. I have limited myself to a mere 15 books, which really I did limit myself. There's just an endless wealth of Victorian books to get to out there. Uh, but the first one I am going to be attempting is Charles Dickens, Our Mutual Friend. This is Katie from Books and Things' favorite Dickens, and I have been saving it because I feel that it will be way up there for me. I also know that I really enjoyed seeing the miniseries a few years ago, which now that, you know, later on I decided to read all of Dickens. I am pretty bummed that I went ahead and watched the miniseries, but hopefully I will still be able to enjoy this, you know, even knowing what happens. Uh, but it has very typical Dickens, lots of interesting characters. It says, among those who are caught up in the ruthless forces of change in Dickens' London are the archetypal, innocent, naughty boffin who inherits a dust heap where the trash of the rich is thrown. So in the Victorian era, people would sweep up their dust and wait for dustmen to come take it, and then it would go be taken to dust mines. Um, so that's the inheritance he, he got. And then Silas Wegg, a grotesque one-legged man with unlimited fantasies of grandeur and power, Mr. Veneering, member of parliament, whose house furnishings, servants, carriage, and baby are all brand new, and Alfred and Sophronia Lamel, who marry one another because each wrongly believes the other is rich. I am very much looking forward to this and excited that I will be doing this as a buddy read with the lovely Anne from Beyond the Pages. So definitely looking forward to this, hoping uh, that, you know, read, watching the miniseries in advance will not ruin the plot for me. Next on the list, I'm going to be picking up a Thomas Hardy. After reading The Woodlanders last year, I knew I wanted to read more Hardy and I can't believe you know, it's taken me a whole year to get around to reading another one, although his are so emotionally, like, just really intense that I do definitely need a break between his. But I'm going to be reading Far From the Matting Crowd, uh, and this is about Bathsheba Everdeen, who inherits a farm and is a really um, independent woman for the time and just a really interesting character. I don't know how much I'll like her because I have seen the movie and... I wasn't actually that wild about her. So we shall see, but I think the writing will be so beautiful and I look forward to, you know, all of the passages about nature and just the emotional force that Thomas Hardy has in his books. Uh, then thirdly, I will be reading Emily Bronte's poetry. I, you know, heard earlier this year some excerpts of her poetry. I'm not someone who seeks out poetry because I feel very intimidated by it and I thought, you know what? Why not during Victober? If there's going to be a poet that I would like, it's highly likely it's a Victorian poet. And her poems just were astoundingly beautiful, the, the excerpts that I heard. So I am also very excited because the lovely Kate from the novel Nomad and the lovely Carolyn from BBC Girl 520 are going to join me. And so I think we're all looking forward to having other people to discuss the poetry with us. And then I'm going to be reading uh, uh, Cousin Phyllis and Other Tales by Elizabeth Gaskell. This has a couple novellas, but mostly short stories, and I just need to read some more Elizabeth Gaskell. I'm still putting off reading Mary Barton because I'm so sad it's the last full-length novel. But then I keep telling myself she has so many short stories and, like, I think around 12 novellas. Uh, so I think also I might incorporate The Poor Claire into my Victober reading. It is a novella, but I've heard really good things about it, and so I'd like to get to that. But then, even some more Elizabeth Gaskell reading, but this is nonfiction. I ordered this hunk of a book. This is The Letters of Mrs. Gaskell. And before I ordered this, I thought, okay, I'll just read the whole thing over October. And then I got it for one, and then I saw in reviews it's around 650 letters. 
So this is one that I will not be attempting to read all of during the month of October because I don't want to rush it. I want to savor it. I have had a cheeky look at a couple of the letters and just already I am like, Elizabeth Gaskell, you are such a kindred spirit. And I think it's neat. She's one of the few lady authors that I know of from the Victorian era who was happily married and was a successful writer and also enjoyed being a mother. So I think it will be really neat because I think in this you get to hear a lot about her literary pursuits, but then also you get to hear about her love for her children and her husband and just her life in general. So very much looking forward to this. I don't think I have a, I mean, minimum of one a day, but I'm not really trying to rush through this, but I will start it during the month. Uh, then moving on, I'm going to be trying again, this was on my TBR last year, but I did not make time for it, and that is The Light That Failed by Rudyard Kipling. I heard about this on Aria Mia Loberti's channel a couple years ago, and she said it's a very underrated classic, and it is about a soldier who comes back from the war and is blind, and just how he adjusts to his life you know, it's just very different and how his family handles it, I'm pretty sure. And after recently, after she had talked about it, I saw it in a used bookstore and I don't have it with me right now, but it just sounds very interesting. And I've only read the Jungle Books from him. I haven't read Kim or any of his poetry or anything. So I look forward to that. Then a uh, read-along that Katie from Books and Things and myself are hosting, and all of you are welcome to join. And that is Mrs. Marchbanks by Margaret Oliphant. Margaret Oliphant is an author who I found out about in the spring, and I've been slowly reading some of her works, and I would say uh, a good explanation of her is that she is like a Victorian Jane Austen uh, mixed in with the cleverness of Anthony Trollope. Uh, so if you you know, haven't read many classics. I think hers are very easy to read. There's lots of, uh, they're very character driven, lots of funny hijinks that happen. And also nice little domestic details thrown in here and there to kind of help uh, make the characters seem, you know, come alive and seem more real, you know, what the characters are embroidering or little details about what's in the house. I think it will be highly enjoyable, and Mrs. Marchbanks is probably her most famous novel, and it takes place in a little town, and Lucilla, I've heard, is like kind of like an Emma Woodhouse character. She wants to meddle about in everybody's lives, but it's done very comically. And she, another main character in this is a character named Lucy Lake, and she works at a design school for embroidery. She teaches embroidery to younger girls, and I think her kind of dilemma in this is that she is treading the line between um, just manufacturing and making things and being an artist. So it sounds like a very interesting discussion. I do have a video coming out later about that particular issue and of course, sort of the arts and crafts movement versus the design reform movement that was in the Victorian era. It led me to do all this research on that. But I am really excited to be reading it with Katie and then hopefully with some of you. And I will link the Goodreads group down below. We're going to be taking two weeks to read it. And we're going to be starting on Monday, October the 16th, and then concluding on Monday, October the 30th. So please click on the link, join in. I have discussion folders up for every few chapters and I just think it will be so much fun and the more the merrier. Next, I am hoping to read John Halifax Gentleman by Dinah Mullet Crake. From what I can tell from the synopsis, this looks like it's just the story of a man's life. And I think it's kind of a rags to riches story. And Dinah Mullet Crake was an author I learned about from Not Just Jane. And this, uh, you know, Shelley DeWeese who wrote Not Just Jane was saying she's highly underrated and she really should be read more. And her plots just sound very compelling, very character driven and something that I would be interested in. So I'm going to be attempting to read that one as well. Uh, next, in honor of Halloween, I will be reading The Woman in White by Wilkie Collins. So, uh, you know, I was not successful reading The Moonstone last October, but then when I picked it up again in March, I absolutely loved it. I fell in love with it. 
And I'm really looking forward to trying out more Wilkie Collins. I think I'm ready. I kind of have an idea more of what his writing is like. It's not supposed to feel like mysteries that are written today. It's going to feel very different. But I think I'm ready. So I will be reading The Woman in White and it just seems very atmospheric and gothic and just it'll be really fun for October. And then I am going to be attempting, I can't believe this is still on the list, but Dr. Thorne by Anthony Trollope. It just did not happen this year, so I am making it happen in the month of October. This is the third in his Barsetshire series, and there is a fabulous, from what I hear, uh, BBC or Amazon Prime made a miniseries, and Julian Fellows wrote and directed it, and I just really, really want to get to this so I can treat myself with that because I don't want any, I don't want any spoilers, so I haven't watched it yet. Dr. Thorne is one I'm hoping to get to. Uh, then, on a more scandalous note, I will be reading Lady Audley's Secret by Mary Elizabeth Braddon. Mary Elizabeth Braddon was someone in the Victorian era who just owned the sensation novel and wrote so many books and just really was such a bestseller. She was such a, like, phenomena then. And Lady Audley's Secret, I think before I heard Katie from Books and Things and Carolyn from BBC Girl talk about it, I thought it was about an affair. But I think it's more about murder and secrets and lies. So for the month of October, you know, what more could you want? I just have a good feeling about Mary Elizabeth Braddon, especially in the next year when I'm going to be busy, like, taking care of a baby. So the few bits of reading time that I have, are, you know, it's going to be, I'm going to want something like plot heavy, uh, and, you know, something that keeps going and is fast paced. I just have a good feeling about her. So we shall see how I like Lady Audley's Secret. Then next on the list, and it's going to be the group read with the ladies and myself that are hosting Victober and then the lovely Marissa at Blatantly Bookish. And we are going to be reading The Mill on the Floss by George Eliot. So George Eliot is an author who I always really have to focus when I read her, but I'm always so glad that I have read her once I'm done. So I'm hoping that I will like The Mill on the Floss. I'm hoping there will be compelling characters. I honestly know nothing about the plot, so I'm going in blind and I'm okay with that. And then uh, on a very different note, I'm going to be reading one called Phantasmion by Sarah Coleridge. Sarah Coleridge, um, was not technically a Victorian author really, and Phantasmion was her last book, and it was published in 1837, so the very beginning of the Victorian era, but it still counts for the Victorian era. And this is a fairy tale and what some consider the first fantasy novel. I know Tolkien often is credited, you know, with really uh, maybe, you know, inventing fantasy. Uh, but I think fantasy goes way back. I think he popularized fantasy. And also, I really want to read Phantasmion to see, you know, what is this like, this woman author that maybe should be given more credit. She was another author I learned about in Not Just Jane. And I think having a fairy tale and something very fantastical to read during the month will be a nice way to switch things up and, change, you know, have a nice change of pace. And then a uh, fun little novella I'm planning on reading is The Distracted Preacher by Thomas Hardy. This is supposed to be uh, very much more lighthearted than his typical works. And this is about a preacher who is kind of being a substitute preacher in a town while they're looking for someone new. And he falls in love with the landlady where he is staying. But there's supposed to be all sorts of like kind of miscommunications and, and secrets and it just sounds very, very humorous. So I'm looking forward to that and maybe as a palate cleanser if I need it after Far From the Matting Crowd. Then lastly, there was a collection of Victorian fairy tales written by, or compiled by Michael Newton and some famous authors, William Makepeace Thackeray, Oscar Wilde, Kenneth Graham of uh, The Wind in the Willows fame, Rudyard Kipling, uh, Ford Maddox Ford, so just a bunch of different fairy tales that were written by Victorians in the Victorian era, and I thought that would be really cool. Just a very different thing. Um, and then one thing I'm toying with the idea of reading also is A Penny Dreadful. 
In case you don't know, Penny Dreadfuls were very popular serialized fiction that came out in newspapers and were just kind of a dime a dozen. There were so many of them. It was kind of their version of a soap opera. And just, uh, you know, authors really just kept pumping them out. And so it might not be the most highbrow literature, but it's definitely interesting. And there's one that was one of the more famous ones called The Mysteries of London. And it really does sound intriguing. Lots of uh, you know, the, the, the plot is afoot and uh, secrets and lies and intrigue and just all sorts of drama that the Victorians love. That is my Victober TBR. I hope that you guys enjoyed hearing about that. If you are participating in Victober and have made a TBR video, please link it down below. I do want to see everyone's or if you are a blogger, please link your blog post down below. And if you have neither of those, but you are a reader who loves to read and is participating, please, you know, tell me what you're reading uh, and look me up on social media. I'm on Instagram. I'm on Goodreads. I'm on Twitter. And I'm going to be blowing up all of those during Victober. And I will see you guys for another video soon. Bye.